Hello and welcome to Alma, Missouri. We're still in April and I suppose I can say this is an episode that I wasn't expecting to make. Um, I, if you recall it during the course of the last episode we had started cutting the grass on the big grass field and I thought well we've seen that so many times perhaps uh, we'll just do it off camera but as it turns out we've had to make some interesting little moves the first thing is that I've decided to get some bigger grass equipment so I have already bought a bigger windrower which I'll show you a little bit later and now I'm going to I've just bought the bigger a bigger forage harvester we did sell a small forage harvester so we just bought this one bigger capacity so we split the field into grass and hay so I have windrowed the grass part already I'm still working on the on the hay part so basically as you'll see the bottom half of the field or the bottom two thirds of the field inside the headland I have windrowed just purely as grass and that's going to go into the silage fermenter so this is a quite big jump up in capacity I think the last forage harvester we had was 16,000 litres this is 44,000 litres because we've done such a well such a good job of looking after this field even though it's on the substandard land on the silty clay we've got some good yields and lots of grass so it was a number of I think it was about five or six um, loads one two three it was it's about each each one of the of the rows was about three quarters of a well three quarters of a row to fill up the um, the forage harvester so we got a substantial amount of of grass into the fermenter it's the last little bit that's in there looking good and we're going to park this up and then this is the windrow that we've now purchased covers a lot more area with the size of this field just makes this rather tedious job of of doing the grass work which is going to be necessary at least twice a year so basically the whole headland is going to uh, has been tethered as as hay as as the top third Just finishing this off now and we'll go and get our baler out and we'll get that sorted out as well just bale this up and this will go into the storage into the bale storage for the sheep and for the for the cars for the tmr for the cars we will be getting another cutoff during the summer time and that will split will be the other way around so we'll do the majority of that one with hay and maybe only a third of that one will be grass to go into the TMR and then we should have enough to cover the whole of the winter months we've still got quite a bit in stock so um, I'm not worried about running out at this point in time right let's get that baler hooked up and we'll go and start baling up those 
or bailing up that hay. See how many bales we get out of that lot. Shouldn't take too long to bale this this lot up. I'll show you the beginning and the end again. As per normal on these type of routine tasks. So this is a routine task that kind of developed into something else in terms of the purchase of the two new pieces of big equipment. It was a fairly substantial investment. So that's pretty much why I've made this episode. It's, it's, it's going to be a fairly short episode just to let you know what's happening and then we'll get on back to more of the of the rest of the um, field husbandry in the next month. Definitely going to have to do a lot of weeding. Of course we want to get those um, the first lot of fruit juices out as well. That will come during the course of the next episode. This is just to wrap up the month of April. As per usual, my favourite baler working nicely. One of the things that I do like is it's got a fairly wide pickup. Right, we just about finished the baling. It's got these couple more of these small little swaths just to pick up. I reckon so we've got a it's probably in the 30s of bales, somewhere around there. That'll uh, pretty much pull up, put our, um, our storage, our, our, our bale storage up to capacity as soon as we've got all the tomatoes in there. We'll need to do something with those. Let's probably do that off camera and just get them down to the ketchup factory. I did keep them up here because I thought the fruit juice operation may be able to produce tomato juice but uh, it doesn't. There are of course other mods that do do that but I think we've got enough juice production going on the farm since we've got apple juice and we're going to have orange juice, we're going to have lemonade, we're going to have yeah almost a soft drinks operation <laughs> oh dear that's right, just picking up the last little remnants of the of the hay and then we're going to pick up the hay baler and get these bales into storage offload this, clear it out there we go, that's that done there we go, 33 bales, uh, yeah, you would be in the 30s right, just jump into the well, I'll stay with the John Deere and get into the um, Hitch up the auto loader and start auto loading these these bales. If you ever get a chance on YouTube, go and look up the this um, this auto um, auto loader. There's quite a few nice videos of it working in real life. Fantastic piece of kit. Just saves so much time. Right, this is the last lot. We've put two full loads in. So there's 28 bales already in. This is the last five. 
I'm just going to drop those off into the into the baling unit into the baling unit into the bale store or the pellet store I suppose we could call it now seeing as we're using it for multi-purpose so that's that grass field pretty much finished one small job still to be done on the grass field which we'll do well, well we'll show you the start of it and that's the raking or the rolling and raking of the field of the grass just to get it ready for its next growth so we'll offload these last five that gives us a good store of of hay and there's still some grass there for the for the sheep I see this we need to probably need to replenish the sheep I see there's only one bale out there we'll do that off camera got to keep the sheep happy now seeing as we've got our own clothing factory got to try and keep that as stocked up as we can just park this off right so all this grass work is finished off by just raking this field we'll put put it onto a onto course play and we'll just set it off let it do its do its thing because because we've got another unexpected capital investment mainly because we've bought all the new big equipment we're going to need a new place to store them so we're going to be putting them in a new barn and after a little bit of humming and eyeing and searching around I decided to put it up and it fits just just fits into this little area between the so first of all the barn that I'm going to be using is the same barn that was originally on the farm so we'll keep a bit of synergy in this little area and then we'll just line it up with the production facilities and it'll fit in pretty nicely there and we just need to give ourselves a decent gap to be able to get between the two barns nice and easy it's just a question of making sure we can get it in the right space so that it looks okay as well as gives us the right sort of access around it as well it's pretty tight I think we might need to change the angle slightly It, maybe yeah, there it's better okay, more, more aligned with the with the production units it's kind of looking where it should be that's another bit of space used up yep that looks good so that area is looking pretty full have a quick look around it there we go we need to soften those edges off a bit and do a bit of landscaping not so much leveling with the ground and that type of stuff but just uh, making sure that these entrances into the into the barn or into the shed Just doing this at normal speed i know i normally do these things at a slightly faster pace but i thought i'd do this one at normal speed because it's a fairly short episode it also just gives you an idea of the of the time span that it takes me i know other people can do it a lot quicker it's not that i can't do it quicker it's just that i 
like to make sure that I've got things in the right place. And even then, I sometimes don't get it in the right place. Right, so let's just put on. Let's clear the grass. So we'll be, what we'll do is we'll put down the the gravel first, and then um, and then we'll try and soften off the edges of the barn, just so that it doesn't look like it's been plonked down. Like to try and keep the more or less the same textures of the of the gravel. Maybe just slightly different so it looks a little bit newer. But yeah, I like to do like to add in all the little dark and light contrasts on this on the gravel. It doesn't always look random when you're doing it. It's probably not really random, but um, it's just a slightly darker area there. Yeah, oh, some of the slightly darker ones. Yeah, that's looking good. It's kind of these little splotches that that make it. At the end of the day. I think it looks pretty good there. We are pretty tight over there, but I don't. I think most equipment will get through there. We've still got the delivery area in the front of this barn, so it kind of makes almost like an L, sh an L shape with the two barns. We get most of our equipment in there with the open shelter at the top. There we should be able to store most of our equipment now. Right, so let's soften off the edges of the of the barn. Zoom in a little bit and just put in a bit of grass around the edges just to, uh, as I said, make it look like it just hasn't been plonked down. That's better. Get a bit closer in. too far into the road there so I just want to get the overview just take a little bit of that out yeah that's better I think yep I prefer that we'll leave that little tuft there just hide the corner the raised corner we'll do the same on this corner operation out all the right we're actually looking for uh, plants there it is there it'll do bit of a meadow It's kind of softened it off quite nicely. Just fill in a little bit over there. I do this bottom corner as well. There 
we go. It's looking good. Right, and that's the barn done. Let's do a quick walk around there. And I think that's pretty much where we're going to end this episode. As I said, it was a little bit unexpected. But, um, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio!